Okay. Old, new. The same, only different. This uh, replacement helm kit got delivered today. This will be to replace the stiff and uh, sloppy one on the Erie Hobo. And it is modern, slightly different than the original. This is the original for reference. This is the replacement. So the back here is a little thicker than the other one, but I believe I have room. It doesn't have all the extra stuff out here, so it'll actually make more room within the console. These bolts, the bolt pattern is the same, the length of the shaft. So th these heights here are the same. Uh, this is the orientation that it's going to be installed. Here is where the cable will go in. There's grease in there. And this is where the spent tube, the plastic tube is for when you turn the wheel, some of the uh, coil uh, runs out into the tube and the plastic protector is there to keep the grease clean. Right now this one is locked up. I believe it's to do with the uh, sort of like the clutch mechanism and I believe it'll free up once you poke through and push the cable through. Uh, this one on the other hand, this is different. It's all loose. There is, I guess, a clutch in there that makes it so that you don't feel the, it isolates you from any of the torque uh, from the motor, the push-pull, so that you can just turn the wheel and leave it and then it is locked in position. But let's look at what else is in the kit. Of course, there's the, uh, the new cable. This is the engine end. And depending on what style uh, you have on your engine, um, you'll mount it differently. Some of these go through the tilt tube of the motor. Uh, mine actually is uh, mounted to the transom here and it actually pushes directly on uh, a little horn on the uh, I guess tiller horn on the front of the motor of course this end it's got a plastic shield on it for now don't remove oops don't remove that until you're ready to install keep the grease out of it that's very important but this will insert into the um, uh, helm there I'll call it a gearbox. Basically, there is a gear in there, and it runs off the uh, it's sort of like a speedometer coil, I'll call it, but it's a steel coil. Comes with some additional materials. This stuff I won't really need because I've got the existing one, but this is like a, uh, a bezel, plastic bezel cover, basically, that goes over top. And there's some bolts, and there's a metal bracket to mount it in your console. I have all this stuff, and it's identical. It does look identical, and they claim it is. This is a spent tube cover, and it's going to go... Actually, you see the one with the two bolts? Or it goes in here. Yep, goes in here, and two bolts retain it. This one, the cable side, this is a quick connect system. Got a pin. You insert there the... Uh, Oops, wrong end. That end in, and the pin then goes in here lengthwise. Come on. Like so. But for now, I'll just put that back there. They say to leave the cable on, or the tag on the snap thing. It does have some instructions on it. So, um, let's see. Something else that's very important are the instructions. They include two sets. This one, this one is specific to this kit. This style, I'll call it helm or gearbox, and then the, uh, the cable style. Um, it's very specific. It's the, what I have is this, SH5150, SH5155, safety 
NFV, that is no feedback. That means you turn the wheel, you can let go, it won't uh, force. Um, so this is a more generic instruction. Okay. And it is, uh, you can look this up. You can probably get this online. This has a number of different styles. It talks about single helm, dual helm, old style, new style. Uh, uh, I'll call them the gearboxes or helms. Um, there are different styles of attachment. Some of them are this quick connect with the, um, with this uh, P-pin. Others may be threaded connections like the original. And so that is one of the challenges is if, say, you're just replacing a cable, make sure you get a cable that's suitable to your helm type. Uh, in some cases, they make adapters too that if you had a threaded, you could put on the adapter and then use the um, the pin type. Um, I'm not an expert on that. I've just researched and was happy to get the entire assembly and uh, go with that. But do your research. You might find this document and some of the stuff on online. Uh, the documentation confusing because there are different versions. This old one that I have here is actually, it's from a 1971 boat. Uh, that version, I forget exactly, but it was around from the late 60s till the first couple of years, you know, maybe till 72. And, you know, depending on old stock and other things, it could have been used in, into the 70s. Um, there have been a couple generations since then, and especially they went for the, the, uh, the quick connect. So, so for reference, there's some numbers here. This is uh, Teleflex single helm SH5023. This is C Star Solutions, and it's a, a 5150, 5150 model. It's meant to be. Uh, essentially, it should bolt in exactly like that one. We'll see how that works. Now, if this is a new installation for you, you don't have one of these brackets, but you would, uh, if you have a new installation, there's a big hole in your dash. This goes in the hole in the dash. You can put it any the number of orientations you want. And one, two, three screws or actually they're bolts washers and they give you a kit with a number of these with elastic stop nuts and uh, washers and bolts so you put that in your dash you can make this up from behind like so goes like this line up whichever holes and orientation you want you can have these tubes or cables facing the direction you want they give you Three bolts with Loctite on them. They can go in, locate like so. After all that is done, you can put your bezel on. And then you screw it to the dash uh, separately, directly to the dash through with a couple wood screws or with bolts, whatever you want. Just as a note, this is a standard shaft here. Uh, you've got for a half moon key, okay? To retain your wheel so your wheel is locked in one clocked position we'll just see what the shaft is here of course it's tapered at the top okay it's three quarter sorry so three quarter inch shaft tapered and with the key for locking and your nut on the top that's not included oh well, what do you know i looked in the uh the bag that had the bezel in it and the mounting bracket and it does have a whole thing here uh, this is a straight bracket it's also available in a tilted or slanted bracket that's a different kit number inside I talked about making a hole in your dash and like any good product they come up with a template okay and it's got the holes uh, required to mount the thing and further mounting instructions. So, good to know stuff. Now with the keyed shaft here, 
that requires a certain position of the wheel already on before, and they recommend you have the wheel on so that you can, when you push the tube through, you're not pushing it through, but you're actually using the wheel to wind it in, turning it to port, turning it left. Um, so what orientation do you try and put your wheel to begin with if you want your wheel to be straight up and down? So let's say your wheel is like so, and that is up. You've got three spo uh, spoke at the bottom, two at the side. What they say is, put your wheel, you, the top part of your wheel, facing down at like the eight o'clock. So what I'm assuming is, if I had that style of wheel, oops, and this is the orientation I'm putting it in for my boat with uh, this running out to starboard, back to the motor, um, I'm going to have the up part of the wheel on the side of the keyway, okay? Um, is that how your wheel actually is? I don't know. I've got to investigate that further. On my wheel, it's a multi-spoked wheel. I would ideally like to have two spokes equally centered in that direction, and I, that would be defined then as the top of my wheel. We'll see in practice what happens. You mon might be wondering, as was I, how this quick connect end is, is connected. How does it work? Uh, this front edge, front edge here is beveled. So it pushes in past something and then snap. Something snaps into this groove. And of course, this this is the installation instruction and owner's manual that came with the entire package. It's specific to that uh, helm and cable type. And it goes through a lot of safety warnings and such. Uh, it goes through routing, wheel orientation, uh, and, and assembly. So I'll be following that. One thing to note is they also warned here, uh, try not to bend this cable in anything tighter than an eight inch radius. My original helm was a Teleflex, that model number. It was threaded on the spigot into the helm unit. The new one, C-Star 5150, I think they still use the SH in front of it. Single, SH means single helm. Uh, it's a push connect, snaps in like a bayonet, snap, snap. Uh, the cable here was an SSC 7218. It was stamped on the end closest to the helm. Um, some literature suggests that, uh, told me that it should have been on the engine end of the cable. It wasn't, it was on the helm end. Uh, the replacement cable that came with the kit that matches this is an SSC 6218, not 7218. And nowhere on this can I actually find... Uh, yet anyhow the uh the part number on it so i will lay out these two cables side by side on the floor in the barn and we'll verify uh they are the same length so it should be an uh 18 foot assembly there are some means to verify what cable you need if you can't find the part number and it involves laying it out and measuring it and uh, you can look at that procedure that procedure involves measuring it from the edge of the metal collar all the way along the black length to the edge of that metal collar and taking that length and uh, I can't remember exactly I think you're supposed to add uh, let's see I forget if you're supposed to add something and then round it up to the nearest foot I forget it depends on the type of also there's an adder in there um, a, a number to add depending whether you are talking about the uh, through the tube assembly on the motor you're tube or whether you're talking like mine about uh, an anchor on the transom that then pushes a little tiller on the front of the motor. So look up the procedure if you have to to try and do the measurement. But the important thing to remember is the base number you start with is to the not to the end here but from the metal all on the black jacket to the metal. Okay, this is the motor end of the original 50-some-year-old uh, cable, and this is the new C-Star one. So this one, uh, this 
metal tube. There's actually a metal tube on top that is clamped to the transom. That's the way this one works and that one then pushes against the little horn on the motor. Um, that will just be swapped over onto that, but uh, the ends are identical. So there we go, they're lined up. The two ferrules are even. They're pretty much lying side by side, side by side, side by side. And we come to this business. There's the ferrule and then that ferrule there. This one's maybe half an inch longer it appears. So it's 18 feet and more or less 18 feet. So that's good. This will do. Uh, for reference, the old cable had the part number here, the SSC 7218, 18 foot, made by Teleflex. It was marked here on the motor, uh, sorry, not on the motor end, but on the helm end. Literature had said that that should have been found on the motor end. That's what one website suggested. They were wrong there. The C-Star, I cannot see any part number anywhere. Apologies to the C-Star people. Their cable is identified as SSC 6218 as expected. That's what I purchased. And it's uh, about 18 inches from the motor end. So if you have C-Star, look on the motor end. If you have a roller Teleflex like I do, it might be near the helm end, the identification that is. Okay, we're going to check inside the hobo. This is a 1971 hobo featured on a lot of the videos for this channel. Let's see. I'll turn on the power. There, that's on to the solar batteries, the house batteries. So the dash right now is held in position by bungee cords or a bungee cord. Uh, we'll see how this thing fits. Okay, here's the uh, there's the dash upside down. Uh, let's see here. There's the bracket, and there's some cables. I'll have to make sure I don't pinch. This is a little bit of a rat's nest. A lot of the cabling was installed. Uh, well, some of it was installed while the dash was in position and the steering unit was in. So does that feel right? I might have to change that bracket. It feels a little tight. It's not dropping in. Let's check out the front. Just like so. I'll have to investigate. It feels a little tight here where the shaft goes through and we don't want that because that makes would make it bind a little bit too. So I hear the I turned on the uh, whoops it's on my knee there. Bilge pump went on. There we go. Uh, the spent tube will go out this way and the other cable will be installed right here and it will run off and exit to the back of the boat on the starboard side. I definitely will use the bracket that's included with the kit. It fits with uh, a lot of slack so that's good clearance. Um, the other one was tight. There's a little oh, fair bit of draft angle to the aluminum casting and the other one just bites about halfway down it so uh, I will replace that that's a simple thing three bolts while I'm at it I just might go ahead and use uh, the bezel that was included with it the black plastic bezel just to uh, have something fresh and guaranteed to fit okay let's see about uh, Swapping brackets. Get the, oops, the bungee cord off. Yes, yeah, bilge pump. There we go. Got the power on so that I can have a little bit of light here.
comes out the front. Let's eyeball these things. This is the one I took out. This is the one to go in. Uh, let's see. This one's got a bigger hole and it's got more positions around here. So I think, uh, I think this will work. So I have the bracket installed. See how it protrudes into the space behind the console. The flanges are to the outside here. So the bracket is in position. <clears throat> this thing goes in like so. I'm going to pull that out ahead of time just so I have it off. It'll be easier that way. It goes in like that. With the kit, came three short screws. I'll use those. They've got some Loctite on them. Oops. Now keeping in mind the alignment that I need for my steering wheel, I believe that uh, having the keyway, when I face it here on the shaft, the keyway is at the eight o'clock position. Okay. One thing I have noted, this is the bezel. If you can see the bezel here, uh, Oh, that one actually does fit. I was afraid it wasn't going to. It sticks a little bit up onto this trim here. The original bezel I'm not sure if it's the same diameter or not. Uh, it doesn't stick up quite as far. I don't know if there's one is more visually appealing than another. They're about the same, so. Failure to adhere to these warnings. I'll turn the warning down. Okay, there we go. Yep, so that will screw on there. Very good, that's later. It's time to install the cable through here and get it up to the cockpit. This is the plastic grease protection, dirt protection sleeve. I'm going to use some electrical tape and tape it to this. It's easily removed. Uh, it will keep it in place while I'm fishing it. I don't want it to pop off and expose the, the grease to the stuff in the interior and expose this to dirt more importantly. So, We'll start by fishing this through. I know there's no hole there. There we are. I had to feed it through another bulkhead uh, in the head or the washroom area and then behind the water tanks and up near. So it's safe enough now, I think. Uh, Hmm, should I let this hang out on the ground? It won't touch the ground. There it is. Okay. So, that's just hanging free like that. It's going through a locker here. And there's a, a bulkhead right here. And there's water tanks here, another area to go through, passes behind, and we're right about here. So let's go inside. So 
So you can see we go through here, there's a little bit of a bulkhead there from the battery compartment and then through here, through this wall. Here's the head. Oh, it's dark here, but that's that. It goes here behind the water tanks. Oops. And here we are here now. I'm gonna have to route that up here. This is gonna be a trick, so let me figure out what I'm doing there. Well, 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 I have a story to tell about how something is the same, only different. Whoops. So let's talk about new stuff. New stuff that is the same, only different. Here's the old stuff. Just consider for a moment, uh, oops. Bilge pump. Let's consider the old stuff. This is how it sat in here, steering wheel out here. We see the spent tube up here just for the excess chain to come out. And there is on the bottom, that spigot you see, right in the very bottom. On the bottom is where the cable would come in and attach on the bottom and the way things were routed before i think it actually was canted a bit like this the spent tube went through that hole and this i think actually came up through here okay well same only different so just remember that at the bottom eh? let's look at this down here now what do we have at the bottom that's for the spent tube at the top that's for the push-pull cable. Uh, the push-pull cable has got to go up, boom, right through there. It's not going to go down through there. It's not going to go, like if it goes here, it's going to go, wham, right into there. So what I'm going to be doing, I hope you follow what I mean, but this up here, just it goes nowhere. I mean, if it went here, I'd even have a chance of making it dive down past this piece of wood and boom, and go. But, uh, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to interrupt myself here. Uh, this did not work. I had, uh, I was going to try and make it work, drill some holes and just make it work. The angles weren't going to work out. The cable was going to be too pinched. There was not access. There was not room. So I ended up doing it another way. And that's what you're going to see next. So... I'm using a flush cutter and a hole saw, and I've opened up a hole. I've oriented the uh, the gearbox, I'll call it, the helm, to that hole so I can get the cable in. I put the steering wheel on, and just to start, I put the steering wheel so that the keyway is at about the 7 o'clock position. And that's sort of what they are, if I interpret correctly, what they're saying, and I think it's going to work out for my wheel. I have this plastic bag on here to keep sawdust out of there. I don't know if you'll be able to see this really well. Um, so the helm cable is going to come through this square hole here. You can see there's a notch here. I'm going to be able to uh, assemble this. Okay. There, I'm feeding the tube up here. Now, I will take the plastic guard off the tube. And I will insert the cable. And start turning the wheel. to turn the wheel when I'm supporting the there we go I'm supporting the dash on my knee but there we go I got 
that. Maybe you can or can't see that it's feeding in. steering to port. I'm steering left and drawing this in. And there. Now, I don't know if you can see, but the cable, you probably can't, but the cable has just started to come out of the, uh, the gearbox. I'm going to they suggest leaving the plastic um, tube, the spent tube protector uh, off until you're done here. So we keep winding this up until, until the ferrule of the plastic cable is in here and then it's going to snap into position. Here comes the ferrule. see this let's take a picture here take a closer look okay I've been cranking the wheel this is about to pop in and snap the uh, spent cable is coming out I'm almost full I'll turn it until it turns no more that means I'm full uh, to full the port full left and that should snap in I should be able to push it in I'm continuing, I've got this console balanced between my knees. I'm pulling this in, I'm straightening that in. There it goes, it's pulling in. It just snapped. Okay, that has locked in. I saw there's a little thing here you, you depress. I read about it, you depress that to release it. Um, I saw it jiggle, so I know that's in. Uh, now, the spent tube gizmo. Uh, sorry, that's not the spent tube. That is the one that came on it to protect it. The brand new spent tube thing is right here. There's the flare, and that's the nut with the groove in it. This should go over top of that, so getting too much grease on myself I will put that on there are two things one other thing I forgot before I, I mess with that this is the the P clip you leave the tag on because it has instructions on it it inserts like right here and that's the safety that will not come out now now this This goes in like so. I'm going to turn the wheel just a little bit the other way. I sense it uh, might be too long. There we go. Now we can see. Hmm. I've got these two bolts. They go. In, they have a little shoulder on them. They go through. They thread on the opposite side. So we tighten that up. Okay, just snug. Now, uh, oh, excellent, excellent. Okay, the helm, uh, the helm cable, I'm doing it by feel. It's poking through a hole and it's not binding anything. So I'm thankful for that. I realize one, one last thing I need to do here is remount my trim indicator and mount the panel. So I'll, uh, that's just a bunch of nut and bolt stuff. I'll put the bezel on and uh, reapply the steering wheel. Um, and then we'll go to the back of the boat and we'll try and hook up to the motor. 
definitely less than I had before. But one thing I found is I've got a fair bit of play in the wheel to the shaft with the key. Okay, so here's the new key that came with the kit, and it's a little bit it's a little bit tight to this. So I think this is mushroomed over a little bit. So I don't really just want to pound it on or drive it on. So the key itself is nice and smooth, and it fits in the uh, shaft of the uh, helm. Okay, so I know it's not bird. It's this. So I'll get a tiny, oops, a tiny diamond file. So just a little diamond file. We're not really trying to take a lot off, but uh, I'm going to try and hold it flat. Yeah, it's going to be tight, but it'll drive on. Key. Key happens to be at about seven o'clock. Put that in. And I just gently the key is there it is. Okay, everything started. So now plastic mallet. I won't go too hard. I don't want to hurt the wheel or the mechanism but there it goes started this is how my wheel fits I've got an elastic stop nut here uh, it's old it actually doesn't stop too much anymore I can actually got a little bit of drag I can turn it by hand though but not to fear there's a knob that goes on there that can act a bit like a, a stop nut a mechanical uh, stop nut it gives us just a little snug good this is the knob a little hammered finish actually not acting as a lock nut because uh, I would need to stack some washers or not very many or does it we'll see how far she goes um, no yeah it does go all the way there we go so now I have full left is how we assembled it and this used to be this yellow used to be my center position indicator uh, but uh, I'm going to count turns. I'm going to go one full turn, two full turns, three full turns, and like an eighth of a turn. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go one full turn and half turn. That's my new center position right there. So I'll uh, be moving this little yellow tape. That's just like my rudder, center rudder indicator and uh, that along with a visual check uh, helps me to center when I'm doing some maneuvering forward reverse I have to count revs I have to be careful that I'm not at one rev left uh, but uh, or one rev right but in the center ah I forgot to put the bezel on well I'll go and do this again and I am going to put the new bezel on. Sorry for the camera angle and so on. Uh, my camera mount broke and I have this thing rigged in place with a bungee cord at the moment. But uh, I've got some of this uh, marine grease. Oops. And I'm going to grease up this. So it might be off camera view, but... I'll smear it around. And that's actually a, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So for the transom now, let me just show you the, the idea. You see there's a 
There's a ball right here, and I'll put a dab of grease on that as well. Um, there's a socket in there for that ball. It'll clamp onto the ball, and then you see the tube, which is up there, is going to go through here. So this will be clamped here, and the ball will be there, and that allows a little bit of misalignment especially as you tilt motor up and down. It also allows for some, uh, some alignment as you curve in. Now this curve, I think I mentioned before, eight inches is the maximum curve. It's good in the cockpit, and this is definitely, um, it's bigger ra radius than, uh, than that. Actually, once it's up here, yeah, it'll still be good. So it's just, uh, this is not a good situation. And I'm pushing that back in. We've got to take some slack there. And here it is. Get this one nut on it. Okay, it's all buttoned up. I still have to work out a little grommet here. As I mentioned before, I use some memory foam. I wrap it, put zip ties around both sides, and uh, you're not supposed to put another cable with it, but this actually, this is the sender for my uh, uh, sonar there, depth finder and sonar. But uh, haven't had a problem with it before. This here is to remind me that, to let you know, I thought I had that tight just when I installed this and put it on when it was free and loose. I got several turns before it bottomed out. So make sure that bottoms out, otherwise you're gonna have some lost motion or a slack. Uh, that is on with a, with a lock nut, elastic lock nut, and uh, that's grease. Oops. I've put the motor in the center position. I'm gonna go check the wheel now to see if it indeed is in the center position. And if it isn't, what I can do is loosen these and slide the tube in and out. So the tape right there indicates what I had it set before for, uh, with the other control for straight ahead. So it should be the same. Look at that, it's right dead center. So I'm gonna check for effort. And I'll tell you something. There are two reasons that I thought I should replace the cable. One was I had lost motion. It was clunk, 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 maybe a sixteenth to a, not quite an eighth of a turn, but uh, the clunk. The other was the stiffness. And this actually is pretty stiff. Stiffness comes from a lot of places. I think one is uh, I can hear it binding and when I put it on, the uh, plastic bezel actually rubs a little bit, but that'll get better with time. Uh, but it's just the nature of the beast. You've got curves. There's a curve here. It's rather gentle. Comes out on that angle and it sweeps around here and there are no bends in it anywhere. Until we get to here and that is within the 8 inch radius. That is more like a uh, 11 or 12, uh, 11 inch radius, something like that. So, um, this has been greased. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. So here endeth the lesson. Uh, a lot of this video was just about trials and problems I had. I, things didn't line up. So I had to cut some new holes and clearances and route the cable differently. So be aware that if you buy a replacement helm, it might be a little different. Maybe yours it will output at a different height, different spigot. So I'll take this for what it's worth. There might be some little gem, little piece of information that uh, encourages you in whatever you might be doing on your boat. Please check out the old Hobo channel for more content, boating, boat stuff, non-boat stuff, whatever. It uh, just might be there. So take a look, please, and make sure you subscribe. I'd really appreciate it.